was one encounter which was, we can call a silent one, in a group with no direct interaction. Actually, there was direct interaction through Prashad. It was the well-known ceremony of uh, Prabhupada cutting the apple and distributing an apple slice to everybody. And at a certain point, I was really down and out and living on the street. Or even if I was still in my apartment at that time, I had no money. And that one slice of apple was both materially and spiritually very gratifying. It was unusually tasty for just an apple slice. And you can see the Swami cutting the apple, taking one in his special way for us, very special. And then immediately after we all took our little taste of apple, a basket came around and everyone would throw in a dime or a quarter or something like that. I didn't have any money, but they let me take the apple. So the principle there, of course, is the principle of prashadam. How Srila Prabhupada would humbly, even at the very beginning, fulfill his duty of giving us Krishna's mercy in the form of prashadam. Little did we know that in this case it was maha maha prashadam. This uh, encounter, in, superficially we can say it was a negative one, because Srila Prabhupada, uh, there were three occasions where I could not, he, he, he did not allow me to, to in, exchange with him or interact. And this was one time where he said, I cannot speak to you now. I have to do my translating. I'm very busy. Now, that was not the typical reception. Uh, Srila Prabhupada, the door was open. You, you, you can, or you could just walk in without even knocking and speak with him. That were the instructions from the devotees. Go upstairs and speak with the Swami. But why in this case? Uh, this, this was also in the book, uh, Planting the Seed, this particular uh, episode. Because there was this young girl, and I had a little motorcycle, and I put her on the back of the motorcycle, and I wanted to show off my guru to her. So I guess the principle here is, tasmad gurum prapadjaita jigyasur shraya uttama. In other words, there has to be at least a, some bit of sincerity in your approach if you're trying to impress uh, someone else by showing them off your guru, then the guru is not going to uh, become your plaything. So that was, uh, that was another encounter. It was a short one. <laughs> we left very uh, politely. So after wandering around all night, I happened to bop into the temple just in time for Srimad Bhagavatam class. And when I appeared at the door, Srila Prabhupada already knew me. He already knew that I had certain problems, uh, besides birth, death, disease, and old age, and more immediate, uh, you know, uh, unpredictable tendencies. So when I showed up at the door, he stared at me, or almost glared at me, and he knew me by my first name, which was L-O-N. So he said, Lon, did you take LSD? He really put it to me. So I said, no, Swamiji. And I wasn't exactly lying because I hadn't taken it for a while, but this was still going on, the effect of the last overdose. And then he was looking at me. If I remember correctly, the class came to a stop, at least temporarily. And he watched as I made my way right to his asana. And I was so intoxicated that every time I put my foot on the floor, the floor was moving away from me. So I was walking in a very unusual way. And he was seriously studying my every move. And he held peace until I landed, so to speak, right in front of him. And I kept my silence and I behaved myself. And the class went on. So there's a lot of principle there. Again, skillful means and devotional service is a razor's edge. From the point of view of Prabhupada, what should I do with this boy? He may disturb the whole class. Uh, at the same time, he's a spirit soul. He's part of Krishna. This is Srimad Bhagavatam. He needs to hear it. So giving the benefit of the doubt, step by step, he let me come to him and tolerate it and then went on with the class. So that was, uh, again, this kind of appreciation wasn't something I, I was able to have on site. But as the years went by, I, I was able to understand I hope I'm understanding it correctly. There was one uh, uh, encounter where uh, I guess this would bring out, again, Prabhupada's tolerance and also 
very, very skillful means, how to deal with an unusual situation, where I came in and uh, I somehow whimsically thought I would start remodeling Prabhupada's apartment. I started moving a lamp and putting it on the floor and, you know, changing things around, you might say, uh, without any rhyme or reason. And there were a couple of hippies there and they didn't do anything to protect Prabhupada. They just kind of watching as if they were watching a movie, you know. And so uh, Srila Prabhupada had to deal with it personally. So he stood up and very politely came, extended his hand to shake hands. I got more or less of a handshake with Prabhupada. And then he said, I'm so glad you came. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, this is nice, very good. And by the way, uh, the door is right over there. And, uh, and he gracefully ushered me out. So that little incident showed his genius how to deal. It could have been a lot rougher. If it was anyone else, I don't think it would have been as graceful as that. The most intense of all my encounters with Prabhupada was when I was really desperate. I, I had no money. I was on the street. And I came and I said, Swamiji, uh, still puffed up, extremely so. I, I said, I'm like you. I, I, I'm spreading the word. I'm telling people about, you know, Krishna and Om and all these things. But I work all day and nobody gives me any money. And Prabhupada looked at me and he went, like tisk, 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 you know, pathetic case. And then he became very serious and he said, simply join us and we will solve all your problems. Again, at the time when he said all your problems, I didn't know it was birth, death, disease, and old age. Later on, I realized what he meant. I had one final darshan with Prabhupada in 1972. Now it wasn't so easy to sit down with Prabhupada because Prabhupada was now known as Prabhupada. And the Hare Krishna movement, of course, spread all around the world. This was in Boston. And the devotees kindly set up this darshan. When they introduced me to Srila Prabhupada, they made a mistake. They said, this is Bhaktalan. He used to speak with you at 61 Second Avenue in the early days. And now I had not become completely, you know, cured of my craziness, but I was enough, you know, sober that I knew I was dealing with someone that is extremely important. And I was already chanting Hare Krishna and, you know, beginning the process. So I was too nervous to, uh, as we hear from many devotees, how nervous they become in the presence of Prabhupada. So yeah, I had advanced enough that I was nervous to be with Prabhupada. So I couldn't bring myself to explain. No, it wasn't 61, it was 26. But at the same time, I wanted him to remember me. I wanted to connect the original encounters with this. So as we're walking in, we're sitting down. And to try to help Srila Prabhupada remember our conversations earlier, I said, Srila Prabhupada, when I used to speak with you in 1966, I was very crazy. And when Srila Prabhupada heard this, he raised his eyebrows and looked me right in the eye and said, Oh, are you still crazy? <laughs> he said it just like that. Uh, we heard different memories of Prabhupada showing how he could be so humorous. And he was teasing me. And it's like to make a crazy person become even <laughs> crazier in a sense. Uh, anyway, we sat down. He said, he asked me, what are you doing? What is your situation? And I explained. Uh, I explained it in such a way as to try to convince Srila Prabhupada that I was no longer crazy. So in order to convince him I was no longer crazy, I said, I have two trucks. I have a business. I have a wife. I have an apartment. And I was thinking, if you have all these things and people, then you're, you're not crazy. You know, I just thought that this is a sign that I wasn't crazy and Prabhupada would be impressed by all this. And he said, that's okay. You don't have to move in the temple. Stay with your wife. Do your business. I only ask one thing of you. Simply try to understand Krishna. And that was a personal instruction. And I... Definitely offered my obeisances at this point. I got to that, I mean, I advanced up to that level. And as I was walking out, there was one other somewhat cryptic instruction where Srila Prabhupada, the last words I heard directly from Srila Prabhupada were, and we are not asking for any money. <laughs> and that was the last I heard from Srila Prabhupada. 
Thank you.